to the uh, first afternoon of the uh, Digital Transformation Government Conference. Uh, today, we're fortunate to have uh, Julie Brosseau. She's a director of the Architecture Center of Excellence at Shared Services Canada. And she'll be talking to us about creating excellence, the Shared Services Canada architecture journey. Julie Brosseau is uh, in charge of the uh, Center of Excellence. She has 23 years of IT experience, 19 of which have been in the uh, public service. And it's given her the opportunity to lead various projects and initiatives in enterprise architecture, business intelligence, and application development, including um, an extensive SAP transformation. Uh, she's a passionate advocate for business collaboration, business process innovation, and empowering employees through professional development. She's currently pursuing her degree and uh, master's degree in um, business administration. And she's also in her spare time, the mother of two teenagers and has a keen interest in the natural world and wildlife. So without further ado, Julie, over to you. Delighted to have you. Thank you, Bob, for the introduction. Well, so far, we had great presentation to this conference. So well, that's fantastic. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you my journey towards the creation of the Architecture Center of Excellence at Church of Business Canada, or SSC. This journey started years ago when I was charged with helping transforming the way we were architecting at SSC. This responsibility followed an important department reorganization, which included the transition from a centralized enterprise architecture business unit to a federated model where architects were embedded in all of SSC's branches. I had been part of preparing this future model, determining the roles of architects and how we would continue the interaction with them. And this is when the journey tr truly began. Starting with a team of one consultant, I needed to create a vision for my future team and plan for its development beyond year one. I remember my DG asking me what I wanted to do when I grew up. Well, permitting me the space to carve out a new business unit with an enterprise architecture. By the end of my first year, I had eight consultants, two full-time employees, and only a vision to carry with me through true, uh, this wonderful evolution. Today, now a full six years later, I can look back and see that what I had envisioned has now become reality. And this makes me very proud. I could speak to you for hours about how I made it happen, but they have only given me 40 minutes today, which is probably a very good thing. But I will start by telling you about the reason why I decided to create a center of excellence, how I created a vision and mobilized the team and stakeholders to work collaboratively to develop the center of excellence objectives. I will also discuss what the CUE current functions are and the results we've achieved. Lastly, and what I believe is always very important, I'd like to share the insight I have learned along the way. The first year of this journey, I was given a mandate to establish a team that would provide support for new architecture governance and practice. Along with creating management for these foundational objectives, I also inherited a large professional service contract and was required to work on various committees and events. With no staff and minimal organizational support, I had to do a lot by myself. This was obviously not sustainable, and I made a case to hire a few consultants and an employee to help me to deliver on the day-to-day -day activities and to plan for the future. Eventually, through various exploratory discussions with my DG and peers, what my team needed to be was a center of excellence. But that just created even more questions than really had to be answered. What exactly is a center of excellence and why is it important? It made logical sense to position around excellence. Excellence is one of our key values for the federal public sector. Pursue excellence is also one of the core values of Shared Services Canada. And creating excellence, an aspiration of any business to become a high performing organization, which requires essentially engagement, collaboration, effective teamwork, and professional development. But what would an architecture center of excellence need to be if it was to be introduced at Shared Services Canada? There were so many questions I needed to answer. Was I going to outsource my resources or enable others to better do their job? Was I going to accept work for which subject matter experts can create deliverables? 
what were the capabilities and the services I was going to be delivering to which client? With so many questions, the one thing I didn't know was building the center of excellence was going to be very interesting. It was at this point I needed to dig deep and leverage my own life experience, find a blueprint to help pave my path. Along with all my experience in IT and the government, I had in the past established a vision, architected, and managed the construction of my own house in 2007. And I quickly realized building this ACUE was like building my house. It took longer than expected, needed more resources than were available, and sometimes I needed to rethink the roof lab. It also required the input from numerous people and a lot of research and learning. I had to make decisions based on partial information and on differing expert opinions, meet timelines that seemed unreasonable, and constantly assess and accommodate changes to my plan. In the end, decisions that I have made were not always perfect, but they always pushed me forward towards the final vision, keeping in mind my original principles and values. On the other hand, building the ACUE was slightly different than building a house. This was part of contributing to the digital transformation of the government of Canada. This was part of a much larger outcome. I had an important responsibility towards delivering superior client outcomes for SSC. SSC being the IT infrastructure provider for the government of Canada, this was going to contribute on the delivery of digital services for Canadians, ultimately. Taking confidence from a home construction crash course, mm -hmm. I armed and educated myself further in enterprise architecture, taking TOGA and various other continuing education courses but not everything can be learned in a classroom. So I also tapped into the valuable experience of experts. Starting with the development of business motivation model, we identified the vision to be the most imperative objective the architect for architecture practice at SSC. This permitted the team to determine the different capabilities that would constitute the ACE and how each of these functions would be described. The overall vision also ensured we knew what we would they really meant and therefore guiding our strategies to implementing them. After six months, in April 2016, I presented my plan for developing and defining the ACE, including scope, key stakeholders, value proposition, strategies, timelines, resources, and key critical success factor. Looking back, I can see that it was an optimistic plan and could never have foreseen how much work and contextual adaptation it was going to take. However, I do find that many of the objectives that have stayed the course and evolved, evolved, evolved even more than initially expected. Now I just prefer to think of the plan as aspirational. Having a vision must be a shared vision, seen the same way by everyone on the team. This map pro proved very useful to clearly identify what we were developing. It was understood by everyone in the team, which often a name assigned to some boxes to identify who was responsible for which function. This was also used to identify priorities. It was a very simple but powerful guiding visual, and I recall it being posted on each of our walls. The first capability established was the architecture community of practice. We thought it was a strategic quick win to create a community for architects that would provide them the peer support they desire and to receive information and collaborate amongst themselves. It would permit them to feel connected again, attend common events, and connect to an online platform, GC Connects, further providing the opportunity to collaborate. By way of interest, from a soft launch in 2016 to full launch, promotional campaigns, and COP events, we have moved from a handful of people to over 350 members. A benefit of the COP is that we now have a member list of interested volunteers and have been able to create focus groups to help us determine if the capabilities we envisioned and develop over time were the right ones. Further, the focus group feedback along with survey data determined two elements in our vision plan that could easily be worked on via working groups. It was with these selected working groups from the ACOP 
that we were able to begin development of the lexicon and architecture template. Not only was their knowledge invaluable in helping shape the future, but being their own client helped these working group members adopt and also champion these changes. Communication is often where an initiative falls short. And we knew how vital it would be to grab the attention of our community member, their leadership, and the community champions we wanted to attract. Along with an email campaign, we wanted to create an online presence to SAC employees who could easily find information for the COP. At the time, we used GCpedia, which provided the design agility we felt we could populate and maintain. We also had a video prepared, which we presented to senior management and posted on the GCpedia. Let's play it for you. What do you think of when you hear the word architect? Designers? Planners, creators, architects at SSC are also creators. They create pathways, they create connections, they create solutions. They build bridges between business and technology that aim to address growing demand while delivering greater value that provide greater agility in an increasingly digital era, that meet the most common needs of people in the organization they serve, and that create a consistent customer experience. The Architecture Center of Excellence is also building. They're building connections between people to facilitate collaboration and engagement amongst the architecture community. They are building pathways to knowledge that will support the maturity of the architecture practice. They are building the architecture community of tomorrow. The Architecture Center of Excellence has been built to give architects the tools they need to not just do their job, but to do their job well. So that we can continue to serve our employees, our partners, and Canadians. For more information, please contact the Architecture Centre of Excellence or visit our GCpedia page. So although it's almost five years old, it has aged well and still represents our vision for the ACOE. I'm still immensely proud of it and makes me think we should have done more of them. As with most things, it is the people who are always at the center of our efforts. Through the various years of building the ACOE, my leadership changed a lot. I had five DGs, seven senior ADMs, and as I can be imagined, each leader brought their own perspective, which required adaptation to our plan. But it also required me to ensure that we communicated and defended what was already in place and to ensure our vision and value was constantly supported and not only with leadership, but with other teams and employees. When you're part of a new organization, there's always a high possibility of duplication of effort or misalignment. Key stakeholders will also come and go, and with them all the time and knowledge that you have invested in them. This is why it's very important to share your vision, your progress, and your team's mandate over and over and over. And it can be exhausting, but it's vital to ensure you stay relevant and on target. Open communication also ensures you're organizationally aware and you won't be blindsided by initiatives that may conflict with your objectives. More importantly, it shines a light on an initiative you can contribute to, to you can contribute to. Each year I adapt in my plan based on con the context the resources availability and the opportunities. I reprioritized, review processes, paused or eliminated some of the work and then reprioritized again. I also had to let go some of our work to teams that were most suited to take them on. But ultimately, and despite everything, we have carved out a successful and well-respected ACOE. So now I would like to share with you all the goodness that we deliver at SSC. 
starting with the architecture practice. We provide the architecture principle, the governance, the management method, and the lexicon. The architecture principles are maintained by the ECOE and are aimed to provide rules and guidelines for SAC projects being delivered. These principles are specific to Shared Services Canada and are complementary to those from the Treasury Board Secretariat. It required many consultation to finalize this last version you see. As with something so fundamental, everyone seems to have an opinion or perspective. Limiting them to no more than 10 was also challenging, and we wanted to make sure they were short and be easily remembered. We also wanted to keep them top of mind, so worked with our wonderful corporate communication team to prepare them in a format people would want to keep on their wall. But it was uh, pre-COVID, of course, and now we don't necessarily have a dedicated wall for our office. Well, the architecture principle are applied within project architecture assessments presented at our architecture review board. Back in the days, when I started this journey, an architecture review board was not mandatory in the GC. It, it was not seen as having business value to the, the organization. When the opportunity arose to create a new governance structure at SSC and with identified gap in enterprise art strategies governance, we integrated the ARB function into a new committee being created. It was originally called the Enterprise Strategies and Architecture Review Board and included three key DGs as co-chairs within the organization. This was the start of our official departmental ARB and for which later became a mandatory committee within the government. I initially participated in shaping the terms of reference for this board, and today I'm responsible for the processes surrounding the committee, and my team acts as the secretariat. It has been renamed multiple times over the year, as we do in the government, and is now the Service and Architecture Review Board. It serves as advisory board to other senior management boards and as endorsement prior to the Government of Canada ARB. The Architecture Council was created in 2015, and I have been the co-chair for many years now. Attended by members, participants, and observers, this committee is appreciated for the opportunity to share and consult across all branches. It is well attended, reaching close to 100 attendees on a good day. The EC has been restructured several times over the last few years, adapting to the needs and feedback received from the membership. We find despite being optional, many projects appreciate the discussion, input and guidance and ensure they get on our agenda. The new West Committee is the Enterprise Architecture Review Team. This is chaired by one of my senior advisors and assembles senior advisors for the various teams in EA. It provides a forum for the architects to ensure project assessments are done consistently and to gather various perspectives from their peers prior to SARB attendance. The EART also endorses standards prior to AC and approves new templates within EA. The architecture management method provides the roles and responsibilities, methods, and processes to manage the various levels of architecture practice at SSC. Inspired by the CBSA AMM, the first version of the SSC AMM was approved a few years ago, and version two is currently under development. It describes how the architecture is planned, defined, and assured. It also provides the guidance to deliver on it. We package various aspects of the architecture practice in the AMM, ranging from the obvious but necessary definitions, which was important for any reader to understand context, through to the fundamental content meta, meta model, which is absolutely necessary to provide guidance to model architecture in any consistent way. It is also necessary to have this level of guidance to successfully implement an enterprise architecture tool. After consultation with other GC departments, we have also decided to introduce the Archimate modeling notation standards, leading to the possibility of eventual wide-scale knowledge exchanges using the same standard. Modeling consistently and evolving the practice requires collaboration and communication. For example, the team member leading the architecture practice runs a modeling forum every week to guide and to evolve the meta model. This forum includes those that are currently trained in modeling in the EA tool and are embedded in other teams and in and outside of EA. 
Finally, the lexicon provides a view of the standardized and approved terms that we use for the architecture TCC. I learned through the years how it is very important to ensure we understand the same things when we use a word or a term as it can have multiple impacts. I've been more than once witnessed clear agreement between people using the same terms but meaning something different. I also have witnessed duplication of, of work as well as work not done due to the divergent understanding of a simple term. Again, a pretty pedestrian deliverable but goes a long way to ensuring the practice of architecture becomes consistent and standardized. Now I spoke to you about our practice, which is the foundation for all architecture work. Let me talk about the tools. When I look on the architecture professional service contract, I truly did not appreciate how helpful it would be to manage teams within the organization. This vehicle provides the possibility for all managers in SSC to quickly obtain a business enterprise technical or technology architect. Called ArcTips, we have had to create three contracts vehicle over time. Each vehicle preparation, approval, evaluation, and communication has required consider considerable effort. And with the limited resources that I already mentioned, I was able to engage other teams to contribute to the successful evaluation of these valuable contracts. Otherwise, it would have been impossible. The central repositories provide a structure for all architecture artifacts. We currently have two of them, one in GC Docs and another one in the EA tool. While most artifacts will be eventually transferred to the EA tool over time, some files will most likely remain in GC Docs. We also provide the templates required to deliver the architecture, whether it is in the EA tool or in Office Suite type. As we do not always create the templates ourselves, we ensure they are reviewed, aligned, and governed. Finally, we have our EA tool. The Architecture Collaboration Environment, or ACE, is our instance of QualiWare, an industry-leading architecture application. Declared to be the standard by TBS in 2017, we adapted this tool to centralize and connect our architectures and create an environment for all architects to collaborate. Due to the relationship it demonstrates and the central governed repository, it is also a valuable business decision-making application. The implementation of this tool itself is a journey that is not over yet. Through the years, we have conferred with many global companies who have also implemented similar EA tools, conducted pilots with various SSC teams, and created the necessary business case and project deliverables. We have had to be very resilient and adaptable with this initiative. The most fundamental element is an enterprise architecture tool is to be beneficial. Well, the most important to be beneficial is to establish a common practice. So the tool itself can't do much if it's not used properly. This tool has required a culture shift as teams need to become competent architects and modelers, which means training, supporting, and coaching every new user. We have constantly needed to reinforce the value and long-term goals of the tool and maintain buy-in from the organization. One of the successful SSE team onboarding to the tool has been the benefit management program. I was delighted at the interest shown by the other GC departments when this team recently demonstrated the tool's capability and their accomplishments within the tool. And now we arrive at what is probably the most important focus of the ACOE, the people. One of our most important people initiatives is the Architect Professional Certification Program, the APCP. As described earlier, we also have the community of practice. We now provide them with guidance and resources as tutorials such as forum, published material, training support, and educational presentations. We manage various mailboxes, including those for architecture governance, employee development, and the community of practice. Through the various committees, programs, and networks we manage, we can continuously champion the benefits of architecture. Over the years, the offerings for the ACOP membership have increased. We have promoted the community, offered members benefits such as monthly newsletters, working group invitations, 
and surveys that have permitted them to contribute to the direction of the architecture at the SSC. Most importantly, we use the mailing list to ensure the membership are invited to our bi-weekly lunch and learn series, Learn Architecture. Learn Architecture was born to provide the community with an information sharing platform. As you can see, event attendance has progressively increased over the years, now averaging 63 attendees per session. And on the right, a sample of the variety of topics that have been presented from blockchain to design thinking and cloud. Presenters come from variety of places and can be industry representatives, universities, SSC employees, or other GC departments. It's also leveraged by our employee development program to provide the participants with an opportunity to better develop their presentation skills. We also ensure we stay relevant with our communication mediums for the community and are in the process of migrating some of our online resources to MS Teams. We like to consider ourselves as early adopters of collaboration tools and optimize them in any way we can. The Architect Professional Certification Program was created to provide a career path for employees and to increase the common understanding and competency amongst existing SSC architects. The program aims to train and provide experience to employees with high potential but limited knowledge, skills, and experience and facilitate SSC leadership to better balance the current number of professional consultants with skilled employees. After approximately a year in development, we received approval and launched the program in September 2019. We currently have three cohorts, two of which were initiated during COVID. Given our employee participation comes from coast to coast, we had the foresight to develop the program to be virtual, and we were able to quickly adapt. We also had to increase completion time for the participants to fulfill the program requirements as COVID had new and challenging demands on our employees' priorities and workloads. As always, we stayed flexible and we'll soon see our first cohort graduation this September. And we're excited to welcome cohort four into the program this October. Here's the roadmap. For the program, each participant is assigned to a level based on their experience, previous training, and competencies. We encourage those with little experience or training in architecture to also apply to the program and seek participants from all branches of SSC. We also currently have employees from PSPC and CBSC as participants in the program. For each program level, there are badges to acquire through a variety of experiential achievements. Participants gain experience during their own on-the-job activities or related organizational requirements. For the group assignments, participants provide a report with recommendation to resolve real problems or opportunities currently faced by the organization. This creates further program value for SSC and the employees feel their contribution is recognized. Recent examples are group topics include developing an SSC 3.0 mapping qualifier or M365 strategy for emergency communication. There are also many courses and industry certifications to complete. Some are core, some are elective and most mandatory. We use CSPS courses, the Canada's school public um, coursework where possible, but most of the curriculum is delivered via external vendors or with universities. Certifications and courses taken are also recognized across private companies and as such are transferable should the graduate wish to apply their program certification elsewhere. Although we encourage autonomy, we know the program roadmap is not always a straightforward path. There can be a variety of professional and personal difficulties, questions, or the participant simply needs motivation to keep moving. This is why we've made the APCP a high-touch program, providing ample individual coaching and support from our APCP management team. Additionally, as part of the holistic program approach we have adopted, we provide a senior management mentor for each participant. 
after the program, we also schedule many additional events and sessions to enrich their program experience. You can notice here examples such as the NOVA workshop or the Zachman seminars. The program not only supports the selected participants, but the training is also offered more widely to the entire learner community at SSC and therefore increases the collective architecture knowledge. To date, we have delivered training to 387 employees. We regularly serve participants, managers, and recently mentors and take actions to improve the program. Surveys have proven invaluable in offering insight on how we can enrich, modify, and expand the experience for our participants and their managers. Their reputation and buy-in from senior leaders is vital for the success of APCP. This is why we ensure to communicate the program results regularly. We value diversity and take special effort to ensure we have participants from various branches, departments, regions, origins, and genders. We're committed to inclusion, and by identifying discrepancies, it allows us to continuously find ways to reflect the diversity we wish to see. For example, at one point, we realized women were not well represented in the program, and we made it a goal to change this balance in future cohorts. How? We reviewed our promotional material to ensure we will publish content that is well adapted to encourage women to apply. We reached out to the SSC Women's Professional Network to advertise the program. We also started to personally reach out directly to some women who could be good candidates. We encouraged a leadership to submit names of women who had shown aptitude or capability in architecture. Women may often not self-identify as architects, but they have great potential and we need their perspective. We simply need to invite them to participate. I try to be a role model whenever I can. I currently mentor two women, one of which is in another GC department, and I actively seek opportunities to encourage women in my hiring and management practices. And to be honest, it can be hard to find women in IT, but it is worth spending more effort to increase the diversity in your team. Even hiring female students from IT programs may be challenging, but looking at other science disciplines and finding potential wherever you can should be part of a hiring cycle. I encourage you to make the effort to encourage women in STEM, educate yourself, participate in sessions, be a mentor, and for men, be an ally. It is really worth it. The ACUE team truly is the sum of its parts and each member dynamically contributes to the directorate's interrelated objectives, whether at a tactical or a strategic level. In 2019, we created our first team charters to reflect our vision, our mission, and our commitments towards our peer and clients. We hold a workshop and review the charter every year to ensure it still reflect the team and their shared purpose. We identify each team member, their role and responsibility, but also their strength, personal values, education and work experience, and the expectations they have towards and from their colleagues. It provides the opportunity to better know each other as employees and also as people, and to create engagement towards the same goals. The team values are also part of this annual exercise and helps the team to determine key elements that drive their behavior and decisions, creating a very cohesive organization, valuing our diversity, but also working together using the same guiding principles. The ACUE collects a lot of data. To be able to evaluate ourselves continuously and realign to provide the best value for the organization, we need the data to ensure we're making the right changes. Using numerous surveys, meaning statistics, content tracking, and mailbox trending, we're able to demonstrate results or see where we need to change. Here is where we are today. A lot of these items are now in a continuous improvement mode, but we have still a lot to do especially in developing our practice, but we're working hard to get there. It is not often in a career you, you get to create a new business unit, 
build a team, influence the professional culture, culture of a huge organization. This six year journey as the director of the ACUE has been a time challenging, frustrating, but immensely rewarding. And with the power of hindsight, I would like to share a few recommendations and insight with you. As a leader, give someone a work responsibility which they can own. Assign their work by their skill strength, but most importantly, listen to them and find ways to assign them work based on what really motivates them. Give them the tools, information, and support that they need to be successful. Encourage them to frequently seek collaboration and that would help them succeed in their work. Make sure you give your employee a goal that provides them development opportunity. Create stretch goals. This helps them grow and take pride in their work efforts. It also will help you in employee retention and for promotion opportunities. Either ways, it's a win-win situation. If you lead a team, don't be the bottleneck. Ensure you provide timely decision-making or contribution required by your team to move forward. Ask them to follow up with you and remind you if they are waiting for you. Sometimes people just wait and won't take the initiative to follow up with you when they know you're busy. Tell them you welcome the reminders. Build trust so you can keep being informed of potential issues and then resolve them. Find a good pace for your work. It is much better to build small and iterate after. And change can take time, so it's vital to respect others' pace and support them through it with communication and feedback and encouragement. And be open for the un unexpected. The unexpected is constant, so might as well accept it. Listen and be curious. Always be open to learn, no matter the role or position you hold in the organization. You don't know what you don't know, so embrace the fact and ask questions. Be curious can only lead to to you to one thing, great opportunities and growth. Work with others collaboratively. Don't try to own everything and leverage others' work or contribute to theirs when possible. Most importantly, leverage other skills, experience, and perspectives. Recognize others' contribution and acknowledge them for their work. A thank you and gratitude goes a long way. At the end, all of these can be applied to anything you do. But I truly believe these insights help me create the SSC Architecture Center of Excellence and the amazing team and stakeholders that supports it. The future of architecture at SSC is bright. The ACUE is continuing to build its value. After many starts, stops, sidesteps, we're now moving forward with increased implementation of the architecture collaboration and farming. We will soon be welcoming a new cohort in the fall for the APCP and well-wishing graduates from our first cohorts. And we're going to continue to run, assess, and improve the architecture governance, the architecture practice, and the services we provide to the community. The journey will never be over, and there are always going to be issues that will require adaptation. Embrace the changes, seek the best solutions, and create new possibilities for the community we serve. And I oft, as I often say to my team, your role in the ACUE will never be boring. Is the ACUE going to reach excellence? Excellence is a mindset a fundamental belief that guides our actions. We may not achieve excellence, but we can always pursue it. SSE pursues excellence. The ACOE pursues excellence. And I pursue excellence. And I encourage you all to pursue excellence too. Thank you. I will now open up for questions. Over to you, Bob. Okay, well, that was an excellent presentation, Julie. I uh, really enjoyed that. And um, anyways, whoever will be posting that. That was super. We've got some questions. I'm just going by the votes. And uh, we won't be able to answer all of the questions, but certainly we'll get through quite a few of them. Uh, first question, 
uh, SSC is sort of focused on uh, technology architecture, uh, sort of a traditionally. What initiatives do you have underway to mature SSC's business and data architecture domains? Yeah, that's true that we have a better focus on the technology uh, um, and we have some business architecture on the way, like uh, benefits management, but also a business capability model that we've created. Uh, we still need to, to do more of it. Uh, and for data architecture, we're working with our information management team to integrate uh, the practice into it. So a lot to be done, but uh, a lot in place to be able to integrate all this in the future. Well, anyways, hopefully uh, some of the professional associations uh, like uh, DEMA and um, uh, the AA and, uh, and the like and, uh, and ISACA can help you uh, on that particular area. Uh, but uh, thank you. Uh, how many domains have you covered with architectures? Are they public and, and posted? Like, um, no, I think you're covering mm -hmm. all the TOGAF domains to a certain extent, okay? But uh, to a certain extent, yeah. Okay. But, um, did you add any other domains into um, into your architecture framework? Not other domains than the TOGAF itself, all the bias mm -hmm. you know, that uh, we have so far. Uh, as as I said, our our main focus is of course, in the technology domain, but there's no possibility in my mind to deliver them properly without looking at the business first. So we're working towards the, the creation of a, our business architecture a little bit more uh, and integrating with, uh, with uh, the IM, the application, as, a, as we said, as well as the security. But uh, the publishing itself, we had in the past some published documentation. Uh, at the end of my presentation, I have posted some guidance, also documentation from GC Collab environment, which I believe can be uh, accessed from uh, many other different places outside the government of Canada. So that's what we have published so far. Okay, that's great. Uh, if we can get actual links and uh, we can basically fire that out to uh, to people who are interested in the oh, super too also. easy okay um, this presentation will be available to everybody okay uh, that's uh, registered for the conference as well as the recording okay so uh, i know there's some concern about that uh, don't don't be concerned uh, next question what business value did you highlight to the business and operations to get uh, buy in to stand up an architecture review board? Oh, well, at this point, uh, the at the time we set this up at the beginning, there was really a gap on, on any enterprise. I remember at the time there was no governance for cloud, for instance, which is pretty new in the organization. So uh, that's why we, we took this opportunity of this gap to just match the ARB into it over time, uh, based on uh, our new DGs coming up, there's been a little bit more value added to refine review, but also a big push was the GC ARB and the, uh, the directive from TBS that made it mandatory to have an architecture review board that made it much more easy for the organization. And of course, this is something that we always need to work on. Like, why do we need to go to the architecture review board? What, what's, what's the value of doing it, right? It's a constant discussion we have with stakeholders in the organization. Like, in fact, the EA is, is often to prevent any issues in the future. So it's, it's, it's often a, a, a value that is not always easy to, to sell at the beginning, but seeing what where we can realign initiatives to reuse or to align them a little bit more and to prevent any issues down the road is absolutely a great value that people can eventually see when we explain them very much. Okay. Um... Anyways, uh, like I said, people are very happy with the presentation. Uh, one question was, what are your key performance indicators or critical success factors? 
have you got sort of a performance management framework sort of tucked, you know, uh, within the ACOE? Within the ACOE, we have some uh, success factor, as I said um, earlier, we're, we're reviewing each of our uh, initiative, mm -hmm. like for the um, APCP, uh, of course, we, we're serving mentors, so we have a, a bunch of indicators, like mm -hmm. from managers, how they're satisfied, uh, from the training as well, how much uh, they appreciated the courses, how people see uh, the evolution, like manager, are they seeing the evolution of their employees throughout this program? Um, the employees, how they feel supported, but also what they can use directly in their day-to-day -day job as well. And it's good for future, but it's important also to get them to be able to apply on the day-to-day -day job. So that, that's the ACOP in itself. We have a long list of, of items that we have identified, but uh, the, uh, the governance, for instance, uh, we also trace it, we identify which one like the uh, are uh, approved um, as much as possible, where we're being able to uh, realign a project. So how many are we realigning for the future? Um, things like this. And, and we have a few others, uh, as, men, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, uh, the learn architecture, like of course, if, if people were not attending or not liking us to do it, we would have to eliminate it. But uh, so that these are pretty much the um, uh, key indicators that were, but am I responding to the question or? No, I, I, th I think, you know, they were looking for uh, critical yes, success yes. factor as well. And eh? so yeah. of course, critical success factor, we need to have the, the buy-in for, from the uh, senior management as well. So that's why we report frequently and ensure that they have the buy-in onto it. Um, I think the fact that you've, that you've basically uh, improved your service over a period of five to six years is already a critical success factor that you've achieved very well. It's, it's not easy to, uh, to get this going. And uh, you're only going one way, which I think is upwards and onwards. So that, uh, that's great. Um, Another question: uh, Are you working with inter uh, interprovincial and uh, or uh, interoperability with the provinces and the federal government and potentially municipalities and uh, other uh, NGOs? Right now, I haven't uh, worked with other uh, government. Uh, we <clears throat> we I have uh, had a lot of discussion within uh, the government of Canada with other. GC department sharing experience, um, but I haven't yet had the chance to exchange with other level of governments. And if anybody is listening to it and would like to uh, to discuss, I invite them to certainly reach out to me. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, that, I think that answers your question. Uh, there was a question about interoperability outcomes with the provinces, and uh, I think you've answered that question uh, very well. Well, um, look, this has been an excellent uh, presentation. Um, and uh, anyways, like I said, hopefully it won't be the last time that we're, uh, we're going to be in contact. Uh, just for your information, the University of Ottawa is also a member of the Open Group, uh, both the Architecture and the Archimate Forums. So, uh, we're looking for lessons learned and uh, how to improve the standard. That's part, that's part of our mantra. But anyways, thank you very, very much for your presentation. And as I told uh, all members, you're going to be able to see this. This is going to be posted for 90 days on the uh, CVENT website. And then afterwards, it's going to be ported over uh, to another website where it's going to be staying in perpetuity as an open educational resource uh, that will be available through the university libraries. Okay. En tout cas, je remercie beaucoup, uh, Julie. Much Thank appreciated. you. And okay. uh, anyone, please don't hesitate to connect uh, through email or simply uh, with me uh, with LinkedIn. LinkedIn. So uh, thank you yep. and uh, have a great conference, everyone. That's great. Thank you very much. And by the way, you can't afford to leave 50% of your workforce out of the IT, IMIT discussion really start start looking at you know at, at women they're an excellent resource the people i've worked with have been absolutely top drawer and uh
what we want to do is really push getting women into the STEM um, uh, area. We're, people, we're desperately short of talent. But anyways, thank you very much. I'm just going to wait for 30 minutes because that's out oh, 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds so that we can cut the live stream uh, without uh, truncating uh, the last presentation. Okay. Now, I would suggest go over to your next, um, uh, go back to your uh, Cvent hub and the next presentation should be good to go. Thank you very much.